Hello there everyone, it's Lydia here and I am so excited to be here on the Ellen Hudson blog and YouTube channel with my very first video. So today I'm going to be using the new United We Flourish stamp set. This is one made in conjunction with Waffle Flower and it is a beauty. It is called Stitch Together and it's so so very pretty. So let's get on with it shall we? So this is the stamp set. So we have a number of images which all layer up together to create a beautiful flowery globe and what can be more perfect than that so what I've done is I've started off with a four and a quarter by five and a half card um, panel so this is just one piece it's not my card it's just one that I'm going to pop on later and I'm just going to draw in a cross lines in the center of my card well it's not in the center it's slightly upwards and then what I've done is I've created a little image already so I've stamped all of the images cut it out into a circle so I can then measure it so I've measured both sides of this so I can then get it in the center of those cross lines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some guidelines all the way over my panel because I've measured the <laughs> image that I wanna place in it. So then this image is gonna be able to fit in all of these little cross hatches that I then draw in. Hopefully that makes sense. I really do hope it helps. So that as you can see, once I've drawn all my little um, guidelines in it does fit in where I want it to and this is going to be a kind of guide so this piece I'm not really worried if it does get a little bit mucky because this is just a guide so then I'm going to pop it on to place where I want it to be pop the layer on so this is the first layer which is the water and I'm taking mountain mist ink from Altenew to ink it up because I wanted a really pretty aquary bluey color for the oceans so as you can see, I've just taken the guide again, so the one that I've already stamped, popped it back into position, popped the stamp into position over the top of it, closed my misty, and then I am ready to stamp it again. So I do find that if you have images that don't um, do the full image at first, like this one, it is easier to create a guide like I have. So stamp the whole piece onto a piece of scratch paper, cut around it, and then you can place your layers on top of it if needed. I do find that this works really, really well, and it works really good for this because you can see exactly where you need it to be. You can move it around a little bit if you want to and it works really really well. I have had to move to my larger misty because I wanted it to go over the edges. So when I'm created a beautiful background as such, I do like to go over the edges to give a feel that there is a continuous piece of pattern paper that I am in fact using and not stamps. So that's why I'm going over the edges and you can see you can place it over the edges, your little guide image pop it over the edges and it works really well just to get these pieces in place. I did find I tried to do it without this little guide piece but because of the image isn't a full image, it didn't quite work out properly. I couldn't get it in the center. So this guide piece really, really helped me out and I hope that if you're having trouble maybe placing things that this helps you out too. So once I've done all the oceans, I'm then gonna move on to the flower land one. These are all marked on the guide sheet when you get your stamps, so you can easily know which one's gonna be which, and they are numbered as well. So this one's number two. And as you can see, I'm just popping it into position in where the in where it's supposed to be. So I just moved it around a little bit within the ocean, and I, you can kind of line it up that way, and it works really well. So for this layer, I'm using Pinkalicious Ink from Altenew. It's a very, very pretty, um, girly, very girly pink, and I really do like this one. So as you can see, I'm moving all of the pieces in. I didn't use the guide piece for this because I um, it was easier for me just to pop the image within the ocean rather than use the guide piece. The guide piece really worked really well for the first layer, but for the second layer, not so much. This way is um, the easiest way that I have found to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all of the Flowerland 1 within all of the oceans. And I think that this is where it starts coming into its own. You could get to see where all the little pieces are going to be and it's starting to look really pretty. So once I've done Flowerland 1, I'm then moving on to Flowerland 2. And this is really easy to um, move about within the Flowerland 1 to get a perfect image. So this one I'm using Rubelite and it, this one works really well. So I've used a lighter colour for the Flowerland 1 and then I've moved to a darker colour for the Flowerland 2. You could go either way if you wanted to but I did like the way that these two colours looked when stamped into the Flowerland. 
So I've continued on until I've completed all of the little flower lands and I just love how pretty this looks. This is where you can see how pretty it's actually going to be in the end. So then I'm going to move on to the leaf layer. So this is leaf layer which is four and I'm using olive from Altenew ink for this one. I love this green. It's one of my favourite greens of all time. I just can't get enough of this colour. So I'm going to pop these all in and this is the easiest layer to pop in because you're just going to go in where there's no stamped been before. Where, where no stamps have ever been before on your little world, these are where the leaves are going to go. So I'm just continued that until I would done everything and then I wanted to fill in some of the little gaps on the pattern paper that we've now created and there's three little images on the stamp set that do create little rows of flowers and they are so sweet. So I'm just going to use the same colours that I did for the flower land one for the base of the flower, so that's the pinkalicious. I'm then going to move into the rubelite, which goes into the little centre of this little tiny little flower, which is so, so very sweet. You could create a whole background with this if you wanted to. And then I'm going to stamp in the little leaves as well, again with the olives. So I've used the same colours that I've used for the land and the leaves on the globes, just to tie it all in together. And I think those little flowers really, really draw the whole piece together rather than leaving those big white spaces that I would have done. So once I've completed that I'm just going to rub out those pencil lines just to make it nice and fresh and clean. Then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I'm stamping onto a piece of black card and because I'm going to be doing a little bit embossing I have prepped my area with an anti-static powder. Stamped my um, sentiment again from the same stamp set. I've stamped it using embossing ink and I'm just using some white embossing powder to heat set it. So when you do heat set, make sure that your heat tool is nice and hot before you take it to your piece so it does minimise the warping. I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape onto the black back of this banner, sorry, and then pop it into position and there is my card complete. I have to say I really do love this set. It's very, very sweet and very, very different for everything and any other stamp that I have in my stash. So I think that you are really going to love this one. So thank you so much for watching the video everyone. I do hope that you've enjoyed it and that you do give this technique a go. It works really well for creating beautiful backgrounds. If you want to watch any more videos we have a couple more here for your perusal and if you don't want to miss out on anything that we do upload to the channel it would be great if you subscribe. Again thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you again really really soon. Bye bye!